So hello, I'm Neil Ursin. I'm here working here at Alma Media Alma Talent as a CTO. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, no ops and is it possible in the cloud. Uh, first things first, how, how many has heard the word no ops or knows what it means, okay? Roughly 30% or something like that. Uh, how many of you are using AWS, Amazon? Sorry, not everybody. So, but everybody is using cloud services. Yes. So this is me, I'm, I have been working in this field al already 20 years. And uh, who's this is reality today? So you have the development team separate and operations team as a separate. And you hand over your new stuff for the operations to figure out w what went wrong. So this is, uh, nobody has this anymore. That's great. Uh, I'm too afraid to say that uh, this is reality. Okay, but uh, how many of you can define DevOps or oh, what it means? What are the parts? This is how we see it. Th this is the closest thing that I, I can figure out. This is this not by d done by me, but this is what we are going to talk today. and. Uh, I'm not talking as a no ops as a whole operations. I'm focusing on the operation of the infrastructure of the services. So one part of the operations is is that. So what is no ops? Uh, basically, it is that uh, develop developers don't have to interact with the operations people when they are going to deploy something on production so so that they have tools and they have, have ways to deploy the actual product on the production and uh, they must be able to do this uh, as a um, trustful manner so that that they can trust okay if you are using these tools it will do the deployment and also they must know how to do the rollback or be able to do the rollback if something goes wrong so the ba basic thing is the interaction. So there's no after the development is done or the new f version is is ready, you don't have to send it to somebody else or there's no queue or something like like that or cer big ceremony that you say that this is a change request. Please do this, uh, and then wait wait that uh, somebody else takes that task and and then put puts that piece of code to production. So basically, this is the differentiation of what the no, op no ops means. And to be able to do that the bi means that you have to have the tools. So you have to have, have those scripts and uh, you can use the CD CDK as some, some of us already are using, even though it shouldn't be used in production. I heard this <laughs> just <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I know that one part of Kaupalet is doing that on the production, but it's yeah, minor service, so I don't know. I, it's not the military services or something like that. But basically, you have to ha have easy, easy scripts, easy to use, and um, you have to have ease of mind to actually do the production update so that nobody worries that or, of, uh, or is afraid that they will break the production. So that, that you have to have the trust you can trust that, okay, if, if if I break something, I can fix it and then push it on the production again uh, at the fast manner. And uh, this means also that uh, when you are in, in this kind of situation, you, you, will be, you are able to do the uh, or release often. So basically, whenever the task is done or the you have a feature that you have been coding uh, one or two hours or, or even a week, 
after that, that is done and it, it's tested, you can push it on the test environment staging and on production easily at with the and, and with the same manner. So you you have to be able to use the same tools on, on the all of the environments. So those should not be differentiated. Mm. And basically this also means that uh, you have to treat the servers and services and, and infrastructure that you are running as a couple. So that basically if something fails, you don't you don't start to nursing that or figuring out what went wrong. You you just delete or kill that entire fleet or services or whatever when where wherever is is it running and you just redeploy it or reprovision the environment. So so basically you you don't care about the actual infrastructure anymore in that sense. And uh, so so basically you just minimize the time when the developers or anybody else needs to put the operations hat on so that that most of the time developer developers are doing the development and they are not that worried how, how to how the actual operations are is done anymore and uh, this can be done so, so that you you start using the uh, api services and serverless serverless architecture so so basically upper level services you are not any more relying on the ec2 instances or actual plate servers or anything like that so basically you ha have to go upper level o on the infrastructure in that ma in that sense that you don't uh, see it as an infrastructure, you see it as a services, you, you see it as APIs, you, you, see, the, you see it as a Lambda or serverless or whatever. Uh, so basically serverless I is the thing and uh, it's the required thing to go to no ops. And uh, in the DevOps uh, the thing was that we, we wanted to understand how the operations work. So we uh, all the developers wanted to understand how the, how the operations work and then then operate with them. Uh, but the serverless uh, is so that uh, you just start using services. You you start uh, start trusting uh, other things. You start using services that you don't uh, really actually know who is running those I in uh, some sense. So AWS, uh, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, there's other other. Uh, a site is one one of the how many of you have used site now okay one two three and s so some somebody is using react at, at least and uh, also azure has has these kind of services everybody of them has has functions in that sense that you ha you can have a small functions and and you can run those uh, really easily and rapidly and this is uh, this what can be then called as no ops uh, in in that sense we might lose some of the control so that we don't actually know how how it's done there was this saying that the, this uh, document db was just released and then uh, speculating uh, how it's built nobody uh, nobody actually knows that or, or amazon knows that but uh, they haven't told that to anybody else how they have built that service actually how what layers that they they have been saying that they are using their own services and they are bu built that on top of their the current services but nobody actually knows outside the amazon how how they have const constructed these services and uh, still uh, some companies have started using and and are using it and uh, the, then they just trust that the actual service is running and you can s use it and you can trust it, it, it if it's something fails Amazon will do it, uh, upgrade it and uh, uh, update it and, and also uh, heal it up if, if something goes wrong. So basically then you can as a developer focus on, on just building services, building better services for your customers uh, and, uh, and profit on that sense. Uh, for us here in Alma Talent and Alma, Alma Media, what we have been doing the uh, in this kind of environment, is in this kind of no-ops serverless environment, I is that 
We have been doing this kind of five services. Uh, Kauppalehti, talouselämät, arvopaperi, mikrobitti, mediuutiset. I hope you use at least one of them. Uh, I assume that everybody has heard, heard at least some of these services. But basically this is our, our new stack that we have been building or actually running in production already over one year, one and a half year, year almost. Uh, Talouselmat was the first one. And so we our stack is so that uh, we have a React frontend and uh, we have this kind of mono repo uh, so that there's common components and also the uh, media site specific components and then we just construct the site of the out of those. And we are using, uh, I think this is the funniest part. Uh, we are doing actual server-side rendering, but we are doing that serverless. So we are using serverless server-side rendering. And uh, so the actual rend rendering part on the server is, is done by a Lambda function. So actually everybody, uh, every time somebody asks for the uh, first load on a, uh, of our service, it, it will be done by Lambda service, and then then your browser takes over. So the first load is uh, hard in that sense; that, uh, it server side rendered, and uh, it's it's amazing how this works. So I I have to thank for our developers that they, they have been built this kind of service. So it's is it maintain, is it built, and uh, actually the deployment is the funniest or, or easiest part. It, it takes only one minute to update the production. The, and the most uh, time consuming part is the, I think the TypeScript compilation or something like that, but I, it's under a minute when you can just push, run the script and then it's on the production. So it means that if somebody breaks something, it's, uh, it's pretty easy, pretty fast to fix things or and deploy a new version or or roll back a uh, last release or something like that. And on, on the back end side, we are using Golang. Uh, we have a, in that there we have a single code base, so we have the same. We are running the same code base compiled as a binary, um, but we are ru running a separate environment, so so that the same code is running as uh, own separate environment for all of the different sites and. Uh, there we have uh, use also storage services and these kinds of things where we have article data or the stock information data or, or whatever we are serving on, on the actual... Why this is blinking? Annoying. Okay, sorry. Uh, but basically that's the, uh, our API service. So that provides the data for the React server, React site or the front end and uh, it's then connecting to quite many types of uh, databases or RESTful services or any anything, anything else needed. And uh, we are using the Elastic Beanstalk for that, for auto scaling. And um, it's a nice service, but I think the pain point, point there is that it's so slow to deploy, it's 10 minutes. So for some of you it might be fast, but compared to front end, it, it's really slow when you break something you have to wait 10 minutes to see that if this bu uh, bug, fix bug fix will fix the actual bug on the production. Uh, we are also using the actual the far gate um, on the one part of the on on the front end. We are are using actually the cloud front, which is the CDN service on from the Amazon, and uh, and we are using actually the CDK to create the cloud formation template or, or the cloud formation template for the cloud the C CDN service so, the so for the cloud front and then we are using the load balancer and it, it will then because in that time nowadays you can connect from the uh, A ALB to the lambda function you can call the lambda functions from the ALB but back back in then it was a three or Three months ago, it wasn't possibility. So we we are actually execute. We have w w own code that will execute the actual lambda from the uh, Docker instance that is run on on the cloud. This uh, far gate, but uh, 
on some of the services we are using a API gateway f- to do the same stuff, but I think we are going to use or at least the test the ALB version that currently supports. Uh, the nice thing uh, with the beanstalk is so that you can have the blueprint deployment, so so that you have actually the separate, or we are creating separate environments. So the new version is, is the actual, we provision the new version uh, sitting on, on the next to each other. So we can we can run actually many versions, and when then we just uh, switch or choose what version we are running on the production. So so rollback is so that we we can actually say that okay, root or connect to the, this other another applic or environment. So I, with the beanstalk you have application and environments and you can have multiple of those. So the, the actual rollback is, is really fast I, if you don't delete the actual environment. But but that's uh, and, and uh, why we are not using the Fargate for that because it's the Docker image that we are running with the Fargate uh, the update I, it's uh, you can run only one version, so so basically it's gradually updating. So you have uh, at the same time you are running the old version al- and also the new version. So there's currently I don't know any mechanisms that you use. you can say that okay root all the traffic for the new version only. So there's no switching in that sense that you have uh, with the be installed. But of course you can uh, figure out something how you can create new Fargate environments and do the switching by yourself, but it's then routing or, or wi- you do that with the root level or, or whatever you want to do. But currently we are using the beanstalk. And the Fargate, it actually takes two to three minutes to deploy, so it's it's a bit faster, but it's not as, as fast as, the, uh, as a Lambda service. So ba- basically, and the serverless is the thing, and with the Amazon you have this kind of uh, fan or different level of services. There's, I don't know, 100 or 200 or how many of services. Currently, if you go to actual web console and, and count the services, there's quite many. And uh, when you are talking about the no ops or, or you don't want, you want to somebody else to handle your operations, then you have to look on the services that are in, in this right side. So there's uh, this lambda is uh, lambda is there. So, so that's that's the most or the best service in, in that sense. You have the DynamoDB that somebody likes, somebody hates. It might be depending on the day also. So that but still, okay, the S3 is the most commonly used in that sense, and uh, I think there has been only one or two global auditors on that, so it's really rel- li- reliable service in that sense, and really used services, and, and they are using that as a backbone of their some of their own higher level service services also. And then there's this kind of Fargate also. Uh, Aurora serverless is quite interesting we haven't tried that yet or some of our teams might have uh, used that but I'm not that familiar yet but it, it seems also really nice especially I think I- there was also rest inf- interface to so that you can e- stitch that's all for the lambda, f- lambda function quite easily so you don't have to have the actual drivers SQL server drivers you can use that uh, use the rest service to get your data from the database. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it was so that you have Yeah. Yeah, that and that's the main part, but basically it's uh, serverless is somebody else's server, so so somebody is running something. 
Um, I think uh, in the order of several less it, it was so that it's running uh, on on the uh, it's scaling up the services or servers that it's running based on on the traffic. But I, I don't I'm not that familiar with that service. But I think we are going to look on on that. Uh, so basically, what what serverless means is also scaling. So mm, at least how many of you have been used Lambda or any type of yeah, nice, great. So so you know what I'm talking. So so basically, you just deploy your code, and uh, when somebody asks you or, or invokes the code, it actually runs at that time. So basically, you don't have to scale it up or down or do anything related to auto scaling in, in that sense so it, it just runs and uh, how many of you actually get these kind of cost reports daily or weekly or uh, how okay some of you are familiar with the money and uh, costs related to Amazon uh, that's I, I get the <laughs> yeah I, I'm I'm the one of the guys that have to look these kind of things and then ask what what the hell happened or, or who who is not behaving in in that sense? But I, in the lambda or serverless world, it it actually shows like this. So one day you might pay for eight dollars for the lambda execution, and uh, next day it's fifty six dollars, or next two days. So something happened. Did we get the traffic that much more? It might be so. Or was some of the services because in lambda you are paying as a for the execution time, how many, how many seconds or hundred seconds, or what was the cost unit? Uh, milliseconds. Y you, your um, code has been executing. You are paying for that time. So basically, if if your code is uh, requesting a data from the API service that is behaving badly, it then might take some more time, and then it might cost you something. This was actually both combination of both of those. So we we get the much more traffic, but also our one of the API servers or services was not doing well. But basically, all of our customers get the service. That was the best part. So nobody noticed n wanted needed to have auto scaling or anything like that. That the actual the infrastructure scaled up or the lambda execution. The, there was much more and also. It just handled the traffic, and also, also the customers get the service. That was the best part uh, in that. So, and in, in that calculation, okay, there was roughly fifty, for fifty, or hundred dollars for the two days extra cost for us to serving customers better than in in the old. If we think of what would have been happened if we have been running on on um, legacy or different environment. It might be so that it would have crashed, or, or then nobody else, no, or nobody have had the service in that time. And basically, in, in other services, I even with uh, Amazon a a auto scaling, there's a some sort of delay when it detects that. Okay, oh shit! Now I have to upscale the actual instances. I it will not happen automatically. With the Lambda, it, it actually is at as fast as you get the traffic, you, it, your code starts to e execute uh, in multiple instances or multiple Lambda execution units. And uh, that's just beautiful. And I think I'm done. Yeah. So basically, if you want to work in with these kind of things, we are always recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you.